everybody, you joined me on the Lexmoto Aura, the Lexmoto I've lent me for a few weeks to do a review on and just use. Today, uh, I'm having sort of a, a rest day from what I know is going to be a stress tomorrow, which is doing the fork seals on the CBR. So uh, today I'm tying up some loose ends and I'm going to make a little video having a bit of fun and go out and take some pictures. That's where I'm actually ended up going is, uh, to a place to take some macro pictures. But while I am just going around, I'm going to chat about this and that. I do need to have a look to see if uh, this thing can be removed. I've seen this bolts underneath, but I don't know if you're supposed to remove it because its placement is actually where I want to sit. So I have to sit slightly further forward than I want to. But I don't know if it's uh, designed to do that and it's got like, you know, nice finished holes under there that you just have or uh, whether it's designed to be there to hold the seat together. <laughs> There's a butterfly and it's flying with me. It's been flying with me that whole time. What's going on? Oh God, how many people are going to be up here? I was hoping for not many. I think I'll be sadly disappointed because I'm forgetting that the world has reopened and everyone is out doing all the things they wanted to do. Oh, I'll put a foot down fail. Oh my God. Speed. <laughs> See, it's just so easy to just bring stuff with you. And also, here's a tip: if you've got one of these, put the uh, buttons in your pocket and. And you don't actually have to get them out. <laughs> like place them in your pocket facing outwards. It's amazing that a car park is so busy yet the actual place is so dead. Like it's like people drive to a place and just want to like be within two seconds of that place that they've parked and not actually sort of go and experience it. <laughs> That's a white throat singing in that bush somewhere. What this place is that I'm currently walking through, by the way, is kind of a nature reserve, uh, which is more to do with the seabird colony over here. Oh, they're working on the uh, turn raft. Basically, what that is, is uh, some uh, flotation barrels with some wood on the top. Oh, there's a couple more down there. Uh, and that's what the terns use to nest on, because terns, are like a bit, they look a bit like a seagull, but they're different. Uh, they basically nest on these islands and they're protected schedule one they're like we have little terns common terns and some sandwich terns most is common terns and little terns that will breed here and the little ones are very very protected and endangered and this is one of the best places to see them well in previous years they've had serious problems with rats getting on the island these two little islands here these like long fingers that caused all the chicks and the eggs to get destroyed. And we also had a case where they basically put their nests too low down and the tide came in and they just basically drowned everything. So the idea of the rafts is that they can nest on them and they go up and down the tide and it's safe and also it keeps the rats away. Uh, hopefully it work because it's not as straightforward as putting them down and them just using them. Especially when what you've actually got going on here is a million seagulls. Because this also happens to be one of the uh, well, this whole area up here, one of the uh, largest bre breeding populations of Mediterranean gulls in the UK. And you're like, Jesus, Spice, you're a nerd. Yes, I know I'm a nerd. I did wildlife photography way longer than I've done any of this other stuff. What these basically are is obviously not natural. This is man-made. It's oyster beds. And they are a place that, um, you know, you can grow oysters and cultivate and farm oysters. They actually continue all the way out there. And that's what all these islands all the way around the top of the island are. They're all oyster beds from a long, long time ago. The reason why this kind of looks like a dump is because back in the 80s or something, from what I understand, basically someone got a contract to, or, or had this land and basically had loads of refuge dumped on it, paid, or people paid to dump it here. And they had some plan of actually doing something with all of it. And then they just didn't. 
and they basically had to incorporate it <laughs> into the landscape because there was that much of it. And I'm back on the bike. That was a good little wrecking trip just to see what was going on down there. The habitat for the spiders I'm looking for is there, so hopefully in a couple of months' time I might actually start to find some. Uh, but now I'm going to go to another place that I want to kind of look at because I want to do more macro photography this year and I have a couple of hot spots that I particularly like using because of the, you know, different types of habitat. So now I'm just going to be riding to uh, some backcountry road valley thing. Not too far away. Perfectly doable on the scooter. Why do you wait for the s wait for the bike when there's a gap behind me and then push straight out? I don't get it. Oh, there's a bike. Go at him. <laughs> Just roll into the red light. Oh, oh, oh. when put my feet down. Win. <laughs> Struggling a little bit to get up there. Come on, let's go to pull yourself up this little hill. It is kind of like 42 max. I was picking up towards the top, yeah, it will get up a little bit more, but yeah. Hills for scooters are always a bit of an issue. Should we dip in and out of the uh, hill car park and see who's around? You're telling me there's not a single bike up here? I am flabbergasted. I am... I am discombobulated. I am... confused. Where the hell is everyone? Is there something going on today? I don't know. <laughs> Now the question is, is there going to be a load of like, fridge freezers down here or something? This is one of the roads that stuff gets dumped on, but right at the bottom, where there's a little bridge, which might also have a burnt out car in it, there's a little river, and obviously being away from the wind and everything from macro photography, being near water, different species, I don't really find where I live, it's, uh, it's a win-win situation. This is weird, this is almost like gravity racing, but there's some actual definite resistance there. I'd never really considered scooters having engine braking as such, but, well, I guess they do. If you open the throttle just a tiny amount, and it does speed up, and you can tell it's not the engine that's doing it, so... He's running down a country road with big headphones on, and I'm... See, look, I'm completely silent now. No one ever said anything about how quiet scooters are, but when it comes to an electric bike, which I think actually probably makes a little bit more noise in this, well, depending. Um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's got good brakes. Well, there was a burnt out car there last time I came down here and this was all knocked down. But is there anything here or am I just too eager? Some little water beetles. I think you can probably see why doing photography and having a bike kind of go hand in hand because, you know, you jump on the bike, it gives you an excuse to go and get a picture somewhere and do some research for later. A couple of shield bugs, but nothing very interesting. Stuff that I can't find in my own garden. I think I'm just a month or two early. There are some of the things that I'm looking for. Well, we're up this way. Let's have a little scout around, see if there's any other spots. It's always good if you're going to, you know, obviously get a spot somewhere to take pictures to find several other ones nearby because, you know, you could go to one of them. Why have you turned yourself off? Eh. The 360 died at some point. 
we're down to just the GoPro. Is that a dumped scooter? I hope that's not a crash scooter. Don't be a dead person next to it, please. <laughs> well, it's obviously hit something from the front. I'd also guess it's been here a while. I mean, there's like a random baseball cap hanging off there. There's helmets down there. The ignition looks okay. I mean, they could have done it through the wiring, I guess, if it was nicked. Or maybe it's just someone's crashed it down there. But it's... <laughs> I mean, it's got a plate on it. HX12BYW, if your bike's being nicked, it's down here, mate. <laughs> I just want to have a look in here, but I'm imagining coming back and found the councils just like, oh, today was the day to clear that one out. And they're like, oh, there was two there, so we just grabbed the other one. <laughs> this is what you got to do. you got to get down low and then you can see the colour better. Very pretty little blue bell patch. Come on, you can get yourself out of there. <sighs> so long, Scooter. You know, if you lived in an area like this and it was mostly 30, 40 mile an hour roads, you're not going on motorways and you just need to get A to B, you know, you're not dying to get a big old motorcycle just yet. Uh, scooters are amazing for it. You know, if you're an A to B sort of person, that's your interest in motorcycles. Is mine started, really. I mean, I did enjoy riding them off-road, but on the road, the reason I got one was because if I needed the A to B side of it. And that's why I didn't really care what I had too much. Uh, but then I got a Supermoto, and, well, we all know what happened. I got bitten by the bug. Bitten bad. Real bad. Right in the face. <laughs> A snake just bit me in the face! Call 911! I have come to realise this is one hell of a random vlog of me just basically going around and wrecking wildlife photography sites. But, uh, you know, hopefully you're enjoying this little explore with me, see what I would do if I wasn't, didn't have the cameras on. And maybe you can see a little bit as to like why I like the bikes that I like, because I do tend to find myself in places like this. We've got a hill climb on our hands now, and this is Nash speed limit, so I can see what it can do. 36, 37, 37, 37. So this goes up hills at 37, 36, 34. Yeah, this is the steeper bit towards the end. Oh, now for the butterflies! Oh no! Oh god! It's okay, there is two still, they're just not together anymore. It's okay. I didn't kill him, I just broke up a fight. What's the time? Ten past. I have time to go to one more site. I might as well, because it's the last one, and coming all the way off the island to just check there is a bit wasteful, so let's do it all in one go. E, this is what the scooter's good for. Are you... I'm not overtaking. I am. <laughs> okay, what's going down? Oh, hold on. Oh, I don't have my mother. Don't do it, any of you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. It's just people trying to throw themselves across the road. Oh, the road trying to throw itself at you. I filled this thing up a few days ago, and I've been using it a fair amount, and it has just clicked down. I think it's just happened. Uh, down one thing from full. This thing is so frugal all its fuel.
So I come here because this is more like your natural English woodland, apart from the fact that a lot of it's pine. Uh, but it's like pools of water and stuff in between all the trees and you get az adders and lizards. <laughs> And you might think, this looks like an amazing place to ride a bike. Nope, completely not permitted at all. Signs everywhere. Electric push bike, however, I don't think there'd be an issue with that. But that's where it's kind of the, kind of the world gets interesting, isn't it? It's like, oh, because it's an electric push bike that's 25 mile an hour, that's, that's okay. But if you did it on a, a 50cc ped, that wouldn't be okay, even though it might be slower. My camera is just about to die. I know this was a completely random one, but if you did enjoy it, smack that like button. Help support the channel through Patreon if you wish to. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, it's still going, but it will die.